Hello from the Fortronics YouTube channel. Welcome to debugging with the Arduino Zero. So I did a video not too long ago on an introduction or unboxing of the Arduino Zero, and I wanted to get back to some of the debugging you can do with the Arduino Zero. And what I mean by debugging is basically, you know, if you have an error in your code, it's referred to as a bug. And debugging is getting rid of bugs. But the Arduino Zero has something special that makes that easier and allows you to do more in that area than past Arduino boards. So I'm going to talk about that. Okay, what makes the Arduino Zero special as far as debugging? The Arduino Zero has a chip on it besides the Atmel SAM chip. It also has the Atmel EDBG chip. And what's great about this chip is it has built-in programming and debugging capability. So for doing debugging, if you wanted to do debugging, and I'll talk about what debugging is, uh, you would need external hardware for that. Uh, you, not so with this chip. So it has programming and debugging capabilities built in. So that's what makes the Arduino Zero special, is all you need is the USB cable to connect it to your computer, and you can program it and debug it. What is a debugger? Because I'm going to refer to that. But the Arduino IDE doesn't have a built-in debugger, and we'll talk about what software it does, but this allows you to track states or variables and conditions in your code while it's running on your chip. That way you can find, if you're having a problem, you can easily track down what that problem is and correct it. So what we're going to need for this, and this is all free, but we're going to need three pieces of software because, like I said, the Arduino IDE does not have built-in debugging. So we're going to need the Arduino IDE, though. You're going to need that software on your computer. You're also going to need Atmel Studio. This is the company that's making these chips. This is their own IDE, if you will, or their own programming environment. And it's actually, they, they made it using Visual Studio from Microsoft, which is a well-known programming platform in the industry. So that's what, we're, that's what we're actually going to use for doing the debugging. And then we're also going to need... Visual Micro, which is a piece of software that's fairly new, and it sort of helps merge these two softwares together. So what is Visual Micro? We have the Arduino IDE, which is a programming environment made for the Arduino open source boards. We have Atmel Studio, which is the programming environment made by the chip maker. What Visual Micro does is an, it's an extension for Atmel Studio, and it pulls in all the things you like and know how to use from the Arduino IDE and puts that in Arduino, excuse me, in Atmel Studio. So you could pull in your existing sketches and edit them and use them just like you would in the Arduino IDE. So that's what Visual Micro does. Some notes on Visual Micro. It's fairly new. There's a lot of updates. So things I might show you might change a little bit by the time you watch this video. I don't know. When you download Visual Micro, they have two different versions. They have a version for Visual Studio made by Microsoft, and they have a version for Atmel Studio. You want to go down to the second download that's labeled Arduino Add-in for Visual Studio 2010 and Atmel Studio 6.2. The extension, Visual Micro, is supposed to automatically show up in Atmel Studio when you use it. For me, it didn't, and for a colleague of mine, it didn't as well. You know, At the time of this video, this might be fixed later on. Here's a link explains what to do if it doesn't show up and how to add it. And I would encourage you, like I mentioned, the software is changing a lot. Go to their forum if you have a problem that's probably in there. And they have videos as well as documentation for, for, getting, for using Visual Micro if you want to go into more advanced features or other features that I don't talk about. Okay, let's get into the example where we'll show how to do debugging on the Zero using Atmel Studio and, of course, Visual Micro. Okay, here I'm going to show you how to do uh, debugging with the Arduino Zero. So we're going to need three pieces of software to do this. We're going to need the Arduino IDE, and here I'm just going to show an uh, example sketch. I took the Blink sketch and I just added uh, some random number generation. The other piece of software we're going to need is the Visual Micro, and that's going to take our Arduino IDE capabilities and add it to the third piece of hardware we're going to use, and that is Atmel Studio. So here's our sketch. We want to turn it into a project on Atmel Studio, so let's do that. So I have my sketch here. I'm going to shut it down because we can't do debugging right in the Arduino IDE today. Here is the Atmel Studio startup screen, I guess you would say. The first thing I'm going to do is 
open an existing project. And so I can open a new project or an existing one. Now what you want to make sure is that you see the Visual Micro extension software icon and the Arduino project wording, I guess you would say. And the reason is, is we want to make sure the extension was properly integrated into Atmel Studio. So this extension, once again, is going to pull all the things we know and love from the Arduino IDE into Atmel Studio. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to go to my sketch. I'm going to open it. And here it is. So here's our code that we just saw. Here's our Solution Explorer. If you don't see this window, what you do is you go to View and go to uh, here, Solution Explorer. And that'll pop this window up. So here we have our sketch, our INO file, the Arduino sketch. But what Atmel Studio does is it adds a lot of other, I should say Atmel Studio and Visual Micro, it adds a lot of other files that we'll need. And it calls all these files together a project or a, a solution. But our code is here in this file right here. Another thing I'll show you real quick is when we go to Tools, a lot of the Arduino controls that you're used to in the Arduino IDE can be found here. So if we go to Tools, Visual Micro, and I hate how you have to navigate over and then slide over, but here's the windows we're, we're used to or some of the controls we're used to. So if I go to Boards, I select, this is where I select my Arduino board. You can see there I have the uh, Arduino Zero selected. I select my serial port, which I already have selected. I have my serial monitor. I can burn my bootloader here. Notice this, automatic debugging. Since I have this checked, it means that I will automatically go into debug mode. You can uncheck this and just check it when you want to do debugging. Okay, another thing we need to do, and this sort of gets a little confusing, is we want to make sure we have debug enabled in our properties window. So if I go to here, well actually I should go to view, and I'll select Properties window. And mine shows up docked because I used to already have it here. Yours might be floating. And of course, you can dock it here if you want. But this has a lot of the different settings or properties for the project. And so let me, let me find exactly what I want to look, what I want to show you. Okay, here it is. So under Miscellaneous Micro, Visual Micro Debug, I have none. We want to have it full. So we can use the full debugging capabilities. A little confusing because you got a setting here, you got settings here, but anyway. Okay, the last thing we want to do to debug is make sure this is set to debug. If we don't want to use debugging and we want to get it rid of it out of our code, we would select release. Let me start by setting a breakpoint. And breakpoints in debugging are very important. And what the breakpoint, and all I did was click off here to the side. So that's how I set my uh, breakpoint. Now I have a window down here that, that shows my breakpoint as well. Now what this means is at this point in the code, whenever I hit this point, that I can do something to show the state of, let's say, a variable. And I'm, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to show the state of random number. So let me click on this and I'm going to say when we hit this, whenever the code comes around to where this breakpoint is, I'm going to print a message to my output. So my message is going to be, uh, this variable is called random number, so I'll say value of ran num is, and then when I actually want to show what the value is, I use curly bracket and then I type in the variable. So now every time the code executes here, I'm going to get a printout in my output of this message along with the value of random. So I can see what's going on for this variable on the chip on my zero board. So let me press OK. And let's see the debugger in action. So start debugging. So this says start debugging, but this is also going to upload and compile my code. So it's going to upload, compile the code, and run it on the board. If I didn't have this breakpoint here, 
it would just be like compiling and uploading if I press this button, even though the button says start debugging. So we can see it's uploading it. What happens is my COM port pops up. I actually want to get this out of here. So here's your COM port. It's going to pop up each time because the debuggers run through the, through the COM communication. I'm just going to hide this right now. Let me put it here. Let me just get it out of the way for now. Here is, and once again, this may not be docked on yours, but here is actually the variable that I'm debugging. So random number, and basically we can see now the the variable name, the the data. Every time the loop executes here, here's the value of random number. And since I'm generating random number, it's going to change. It also gives me the min and max. I can then right click on this and get other information. So for instance, if I want to see the hexadecimal value, there it is. Now I can also, you know, have multiple breakpoints, most multiple variables, and have those variables listed here as well. Here's you can see that it's printing out to my output. So my remember the message we made value of random number is so there it is. So now we have the sort of the basic functionality of of the debug up and running. Let's add another feature to this. So we can do different things here. Once again, I'm not going to show everything the debugger can do, but let me show you some of the main things. So let me go to condition, and let's say random, the name of our variable. Basically, this is almost like writing an if statement. If random number is greater than 50, if this is true, then print out, or then uh, I should say execute this breakpoint. So when I reload this code, it, this breakpoint won't do anything unless the random number is above 50 and you can see it's gonna be from 0 to 100 so you know ideally half the time it won't execute so I'm gonna press start debugging first first I'm gonna press stop the debugger then I'm gonna press start and this is gonna compile and re-upload my code so nothing's hit yet because I haven't had it above 50 all of a sudden I got one above 50 so there it is, 73, now 54. So it's only going to hit this when that condition is met. And some of the other things, hit count. So you can say, I have it break always. You can have it break based off of how many times the breakpoint was hit. So you can track how many times the code is actually making it to the breakpoint. Okay, so that's some cool things. So. Now we don't have to write out, you know, information to our serial monitor to do our debugging. We can actually do this right here in our IDE, and it's nice and convenient. Let me show you some other stuff you can do with the debugger that's, that's pretty cool. I'm going back to my Solution Explorer, clicking on my project, and then I'm going to go down to the Properties. And let me look around real quick. Here's some debug reporting, and this is this is some cool stuff. So I can actually follow the state of some of my analog digital pins as well as my memory, as well as some other stuff your like your I squared C communication, which I to be honest, I have not used that yet. So let me go to that. Let me let's track our analog and digital pins. So I'm going to set those to true, and then I'm going to stop debugging, start again. My code is uploading, and here I'm getting some of my printouts. So first, let's look at the digital pins. So here, this gives me the state of my digital pins. Red is on, excuse me, red is off, green is on. I should say that I should say green is high red is low and some of these may randomly change basically if you have them floating but if you're controlling some of them you'd expect some action there let me look at the analog pin so this is mapping out the values of our analog pins 
If you note, I have analog pin 4 is up much higher than the rest because I actually have that. These other ones are just floating. That's why you're kind of seeing very varying values. But A4 I actually have connected to the power supply. So if I take that out, so if I unconnect it, we can see it drop. So cool feature. So besides like tracking the variables and things like that, we can actually uh, track our pin values as well as our uh, memory usage. Cool things you can do with the debugger with Atmel Studio that take you beyond what you can do with the Arduino IDE. Now, if we don't want to use a breakpoint or we want to ignore it, but we have the breakpoint set up and we don't want to lose our settings, we can disable the breakpoint. And so now it won't be used next time we upload it. And if we don't want to have debugging in, we switch to the release mode here. And this is essentially release code where you don't want the debugging because debugging essentially adds hidden code that you don't see to your to your project to do the debugging. I just remember there's one last thing I want to show and then I'll then you'll you can hear me stop talking. Going back to these properties. Where is it? The debugging uses the serial communication on the board the pin zero and and one digital pins. So what if you have a project where you're actually using those pins and you want to do debugging? It's going to it's going to mess up your debugging. So they actually put features in here where it'll set up a software serial port on your board so you can specify different digital ports to use for the debugger if you're using your your built in serial ports. So another cool feature but keep in mind, the debugger is using the serial communication. Okay, that's all. Okay, so that's it for debugging with the Arduino Zero. We went into the fact that why the Arduino is special when it comes to debugging and how to use Atmel Studio to do debugging on the Arduino Zero board. Here I have my shameless plug on the bottom. Forstronics LLC, we do contracting and consulting services. If you're interested, feel free to uh, contact us on Twitter or using this email address. You can learn more about our contracting and consulting services either from the video on my YouTube channel or from going to forgetronics.com. Thank you for watching.